Hello, it's Dan here. Today we're going to have a look at the Yamaha Stage Pass 1K Mark II. In theory, this is an entire PA system in this box. Now I'm assuming this is aimed towards acoustic duos, solo performers, maybe small acoustic bands, but it could be a good solution for maybe a mobile DJ who's playing small rooms, maybe a kids DJ. First of all, I'm going to get it out of the box and we're going to have a look at how portable it will be if it's, say, just me carrying it. So here we go. So this looks like the padded cover which the PA will fit into. Seems to be quite nice quality. Now these look like they're simply poles, although I can see the connections in them. So that I'm assuming these are going to be the separators from the um, the line away speaker which fits onto the sub. And there's two of them, so I guess you could choose what kind of height you would like the uh, speakers to be at. And here is the line away speaker. I'm not sure how many speakers are in that. I'll have a look in a moment. Uh, I believe these are something like one and a half inch diameter speakers in there. Be really interesting to see how these cope with kind of loud vocals, loud guitars, loud music. Okay, here's the main event. So, first impressions. Yeah. Feels like a kind of fairly lightweight speaker. Now that in there is a 12 inch sub. Will that be enough to cope with the live uh, situation? Possibly. Obviously what we're dealing with here is a mono uh, system. Now I believe you can connect these up with another Yamaha system, although that kind of begs the question, why would you bother when you could just get a normal PA system with two 15 inch speakers? But let's wait and see. Right, so let's have a look and see how this packs into one portable unit. I guess this just slides over the top. Okay, so I guess the speaker would go in this one. A little compartment back here, which I guess you could put your um, your kettle lead in. And then there's a flap on the top, it gives you access to the handle, and I guess, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I guess most people would be able to quite easily transport that. So if you're a mobile DJ, you know, working on your own, maybe doing two or three birthday parties, say, on a Saturday afternoon, that would be quite a good system. That's ridiculously easy to set up. That feels quite stable. Just trying to think in a worst case situation, someone drunk comes along, hits the speaker, I'd like it to be a little bit more sturdy than that. I'm just trying to think of some of the gigs I've played where it's been a bit rowdy. It's not bad, but could that break? Could the connections break? Yeah, but I guess, I guess this system is kind of not really aimed towards those kind of big rowdy gigs. This is probably more kind of acoustic, you know, kind of small time kind of show that these would be ideal for. Let's plug it up and have a look. Okay, so here we are. There's the line away speaker on top with the, uh, the separators there and the sub on the bottom. Let's have a look at the controls. Stage Pass 1K Mark II. Now, what have we got here? So, we've got four inputs. Here's the connections on the front. So we've got three mic lines, kind of combination XLR jack. There we've got the stereo, so I'm assuming you could put a, an external mixer into this. So you could just run this system as a kind of amplification and uh, actual speaker system. So you could, if you uh, needed more than the four inputs, you could just use another mixer. Again, that kind of begs the question of what's the point in this. Um, 
but I guess again it's the portability that uh, we've got to think about. Let's have a look at the inputs themselves. Okay, so here we've got the reverb. Now, the reverb, obviously, there's your control for each knob. However, the actual uh, reverb itself has a number of different things you can choose from. So you've got hall, plate, room, and echo, which is quite cool. So that's like a multi kind of um, effects channel there. Now the EQ is interesting because it looks like all the way to the left is your kind of low cut. I would assume that's great for things like vocals. So you're going to mostly eliminate things like feedback um, and it will give you a nice kind of almost like that kind of Mackey uh, vocal sound. Now to the right, if you see there, that's got the uh, the mid scoop. So I'm, I'm assuming that would be more suitable for music. So that's quite cool. And obviously you've got um, control in between this. So it's like an intuitive EQ. It's not just, um, it's not just your highs and your lows. That's quite cool actually, because they've, they've really thought about what someone um, would be using this system for. So say you had say two vocals You'd probably put those two vocals like that Now if you've got music back in track, you'd probably pull it like that Here we've got the levels. Okay self-explanatory. It shows you when they're clipping. That's useful Switch between mic and line uh, There you've got your high Z. So I'm assuming that's good for guitars things like that um, and again this it looks like this channel here channel 4 is going to be the one for your backing tracks or maybe just kind of music in between songs um, that kind of thing and there you can see we've got Bluetooth now that's gonna be quite handy I think now I did mention earlier that you can uh, link this system up with another identical one um, and then you'd have a stereo pair and if you look up here Yes, You've got mono and stereo mode. Now I know there is a way, I believe, that you can actually link this up with another identical um, system and double the amount of inputs, but then you'd be running the system in mono, which wouldn't really matter for most um, circumstances. That wouldn't really affect what you're doing. But if you really needed stereo, then yeah, you'd be limited to the uh, the number of inputs on here. And obviously how you link it, here you go. you got your link monitor there, your inputs, and that one there. So first of all, I think I'm gonna try and play some music through this. And see how easy it is to connect to my Bluetooth on my normal Android device. Okay, so that's fairly easy to connect actually. So you just hold the Bluetooth button down for three seconds, simply pair it uh, with your device. I've just got some royalty free, free music here on uh, YouTube. So let's just have a quick listen, shall we? That's quite impressive actually. There's the amount of um, bass and sub that this is generating is quite impressive. I had that up quite loud then. I would imagine that would be perfectly loud enough for most small pubs. Obviously, if you're going into a bigger kind of club situation, you're probably gonna struggle. I had the um, my device up to max. Now on the channel itself, I had it at Unity and the um, the main volume I kind of had just over halfway. So again, it's not like I'm really driving the system. I wouldn't like to push it more than that. It, do, it did feel like 
it was slightly on the edge but it sounded good it did sound really good this would be great a little great system for like a house party or something like that I can imagine there's a lot of kind of small events um, that would really benefit from something like this because the actual square footage that it takes up is minimal you can stick this in the corner of the room a neat little system actually and I'm kind of coming round to this idea of using this kind of uh, array system because again yeah it, it looks good and it's not very noticeable you could stick this in the corner of a room and it's not going to stick out too much and that was dead easy to connect the Bluetooth to this system so that's a win straight away now let's see what vocals and maybe some acoustic guitar sound like through it Checking the mic Checking the mic Whoa. Okay, so my initial impression of the the microphone um, I guess if you get the control option with a Bluetooth device uh, you can have a little bit more control over the EQ, but I personally would like like it a little bit more toppy. Sounds a little bit bassy, mid-rangey for me. I've got the EQ all the way down to the left, which gives you that kind of bass cut. Now, what I did notice um, when I was just trying out the acoustic, uh, as I was just turning it up, I was getting quite a lot of feedback. Now, I think on this PA system, you're gonna to have to be very careful where you put it. If you're uh, an acoustic duo or a singer, as with most PA systems, you don't wanna really be in front of the speaker, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of feedback. So I wonder how far behind the speaker I need to be to eliminate the possibility, especially if we're trying to push it for higher volumes. So what I might do in a minute, I'm gonna move this PA system forward a little bit, move myself back a little bit, to give it the best possible chance. Okay, let's see how far we can push this PA system without it causing a feedback nightmare. We're going to push the vocal a little bit. One, two, yes, hello. One, two, two, yes, one, two. Hello, hello, one, two, two, check, check. Check, one, two. That's with the main up to about 12 o'clock and the mic input up to about 12 o'clock. Uh, just for reference, I'm using uh, a Sennheiser uh, E945, decent mic. Again, that sounds a little bit mid-rangey to me. I've got some reverb on here. Uh, let's just try messing with this EQ a little bit. Two, 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 yes, one, two, going over to the right which is more of the music setting. Oh yeah, that's very bassy, that is. No, don't like that. So, okay, all the way back to the left. Okay. I personally would like it a little bit more toppy than that. But like I said, I, I assume the app, which, which we will have a look at, will give me more option for that. One, two, at this loud volume, when I say loud, I've got the first channel up at 12 o'clock and I've got the master at 12 o'clock. That almost sounds like it's just about to fart. One, two. So let's push it a little bit more and see how we get on. One, two. Check. One, two. Not bad. One, two. Check. One, two. Hello. Okay, now let's have a look at the guitar and see how far we can push the guitar without it causing a, a nuisance. I've got my guitar at about 12 o'clock. Oh, can you hear that? Okay, so it started feedback then. Okay, so we're going to turn my guitar down slightly from this end. And I've got the high Z button pushed in. The guitar is going into uh, channel number two. Let's 
try a little bit of reverb on the acoustic channel. Okay, I'm going to turn the EQ all the way to the left, as in the vocal channel. I'm a singer, songwriter, and I'm a try it out of PA. We've got the Yamaha stage pass Mark II. Sounds okay. By the way, I'm not a guitar player, so do excuse my guitar playing. Okay, that's, that's nice. Let's just try and push it a little bit more. Okay, again, it's sounding slightly mid-rangey to me. Um, I guess I'm just used to a bit more control over the EQ. It's quite limited. Uh, just sat here with the controls in front of me. Like I said, the, the EQ is this intuitive uh, in EQ, which I like. Uh, however, it doesn't give me all of the control that I need. So we'll have a look at the, the actual the Bluetooth um, control app and see if that gives us some more options. Okay, so I've got the instructions out on how to connect the SagePass controller to your device. Uh, it's quite easy. Uh, obviously, find it on your Bluetooth list. Hold the. It asks you to hold the uh, Bluetooth button down for one second, and then it asks you to choose a password. So, fairly easy so far. Uh, obviously, you can see my voice is uh, it's coming through the mic. You can see it's actually um, being picked up there on channel one. Let's see if we've actually got any control over the EQs. What have we got here? So I could turn the level up and down, that's quite cool. So I, could, I so you could have someone, a friend of yours, or a sound person actually kind of stood remotely uh, turning this, this stuff up and down. That's pretty cool, actually. For, for a device of this kind of compact size, this is a pretty cool um, solution. Um, I just want to see if I've got any more control over the EQs themselves. Okay, so here's the, the reverb settings. Okay, so I can uh, add and remove reverb to each channel. Again, that's good. What else have we got? Editor, so there's music player. Okay, so this is if you want to actually connect your device as a music player. I guess it's like a sort of rudimentary mixer. Again, pretty cool if you want background music. So this option here takes us to the EQ and we can actually we can actually fine tune the EQ of each channel. So let's see how that performs. One, two. One two 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 one two one two hello to try and get a little bit more one two yes one two one two one two yes hello now that is much better actually so yes so to get the most out of this PA system you need this app uh, so you'll need a device uh, you'd be better off with a tablet I'm just doing this on my phone uh, but yeah a tablet iPad or any old Android device uh, you're gonna have pretty good control over the um, the EQs on each uh, channel that's cool so obviously here you've got your frequency and gain let's just come out of that uh, you can pan center it I'm assuming though that's only going to be uh, when you've connected two of these things up uh, I haven't mentioned the ducker yet, so the ducker switch over on here, that one there, 
So that's when you want to um, have, if you have music playing on the background, say if you're a DJ, and when you start talking through the mic, the music will automatically uh, just reduce. Uh, so you can say, oh, you know, can the uh, owner of a Ford Escort please move their vehicle as it's blocking the fire exit, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's cool. I like that very much. So when you move uh, this on here, if you watch here, see that one there? Okay, so I don't know which one overrides which, but it's fairly self-explanatory. I guess for most situations we'd want that set to probably the middle to give you um, the best uh, compromise between speech, vocals and background music if that's the kind of thing you're doing. So this is quite, um, it's quite a comprehensive solution actually. Uh, obviously you only have the four channels, uh, one of which um, could be used for your background music or, or a, uh, an external mixer, that kind of thing. Um, that's quite cool. Now I wonder if that, um, that channel four, which has got the uh, Bluetooth option, I wonder if that can be used in parallel with a stereo input at the same time. That could be quite interesting. I'll look up on that. But I, th I think that is possible. So you've technically got some more channels there you can use. So the Yamaha Stage Pass 1K Mark II. Um, so now I've, I've taken the spaces out. I've just put the, uh, the line away on top here. So it's even more of a compact solution if you do it like this. Um, and again, not, not all situations will require those spaces to um, heighten the line away speaker. This would be a really good option for someone who, maybe in a, a, a wedding situation where you have a harp player or a guitar player and you want to hide them in the corner so they're not intruding on the guests. Um, and you're not going to want a crazy amount of volume in a situation like that. You want to be quite subtle. Now, obviously, the, the one thing you need to bear in mind is that these speakers have got quite a, a, a wide angle. I think it's something like 170 degrees. So you do need to be careful about where you position your mics and your guitars, your instruments, because there is a very good chance, uh, as I experienced then, that you, you might experience a little bit of feedback if you're trying to push the volume a little bit. So you would want to kind of sit behind this or away from it um, to a certain extent, so to eliminate that possibility. Uh, I think with a system like this, you're going to, you're going to struggle to use it for a full band. I don't think it's going to be um, suitable for that because uh, I just don't think it's got quite the guts that you need. Um, the kind of thing you'd get from a full range 15 inch, a pair of 15 inch speakers, uh, active speakers or speaker passive with an amp. You're not going to get that same punch. However, um, certainly downloading the control app uh, on my device gave you a lot more control over the EQs and the settings. And if you had someone with you who could kind of stand in front of you, like a sound man would, uh, they have quite a lot of control over the sound. Um, and again, with the reverbs, the EQs, the levels, it's quite a user-friendly device. And you can save those presets. So if you had a, a number of performers uh, on the night, you could have different presets for each performer. So I'm actually quite impressed with this system. This is probably more suited for singers, singers who sing to backing tracks, uh, acoustic duos, uh, maybe even kind of uh, small acoustic bands who don't need a massive amplification but need a nice, clean, sweet sound. And for portability, this is a really, really good option. Um, you could stick this on, on your back seat, actually, quite easily. Uh, so it's really ideal for people who don't ha uh, have access um, to big cars or you, you, could, you could even travel on a bus with this thing. And uh, a mobile DJ could easily get away with this for a small gig. So if you're uh, out doing kids parties on a Saturday, this is a great solution. I really like the way they've thought about the EQs on each of the channels to make it um, ideal for most situations you're going to find yourself in. They haven't bothered including loads of uh, options which would be superfluous for a system like this. 
Um, so having the, uh, the speech and the club modes for the global EQ and the individual EQs on each channel. So you can tailor it for instruments, music or microphone. That's really good. So yeah, I'm really impressed with this system. So the Yamaha Stage Pass 1K Mark II gets a thumbs up. Thank you.